All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the second video in this series. So this is what we are trying to create here. I have this image uh, in a link in the description if you want to uh, follow along with this, but this is just an image I got from Google. So you can even Google this, just a Google point of sale. You may get some images that are similar. The image itself isn't really important because this is just a guide. We don't want to really uh, do everything correctly here. It's just a simple guide. So in order for us to run this, like I'd said earlier, we're going to need a few pieces of software because we want it to be like a Windows ex uh, executable file. So we want to have a setup so that once we give our client, they can install it on Windows and then we want it to be standalone so they don't have to open a browser in order to run it. So for that to work, we need a software called PHP Desktop. So this is just a software created in C++ by somebody and it, it's, it's like a browser that runs PHP and uh, that helps to make it look like a Windows application. So it's quite nice very uh, simple to use and free also because it's open source. So this is really awesome. Uh, good on the creator here to give us this for free. So once you search for PHP desktop like this online, you're going to have this um, uh, GitHub link, which is this one. And then you can just go to code and download the zip file. Now I won't be doing this right now. I will do this at the end because this is like the deployment part where we deploy the website. So I'd rather get the latest version because they do make updates. Look at this, this is like three days ago. So I'd rather at the end, then I download the latest version and then use that. So since we're not going to get it right now, we need some way to, because this comes with its own server. So once you have this PHP desktop, you don't actually need to install any server like WAMP or ZAMP. Uh, you can just run the software directly because it comes with PHP and it comes with a server of its own. So you don't need anything else if you use PHP desktop. However, it's a little bit difficult to work inside PHP desktop because it's uh, browsers have so many tools that this one doesn't have for debugging, that's, that is. Because we're going to be using a lot of JavaScript, so the debugging process should be as easy as possible. So we will leave this for last while we do some testing. So in order for us to run uh, our website locally without PHP desktop, we're going to use ZAMP. So if you don't already have ZAMP installed, just uh, type ZAMP download and visit this one that says Apache Friends. And this is what you get. So you can download the 64-bit version with uh, PHP 8. Now, if this doesn't suit uh, your computer size or something, you can click on more downloads to see more versions. Or if you have Linux on your system, uh, you can do that or you can download this version. Though so I'd rather for, Zamp, uh, for OS, you download uh, MAMP and uh, LAMP for Linux, but you can get ZAMP as well, that's okay. So once you download this, just install it on your computer and we are ready to go. Also, we're going to need Bootstrap. So of course, just type Bootstrap there and uh, select the getbootstrap.com website and then just uh, download. This is version 5.1.3 currently, so you can get the version that you like. So Bootstrap, a, a little note about Bootstrap. Um, if you're going to create a project really fast, uh, Bootstrap is really handy. So this is why I, I use Bootstrap all the time now. Um, because sometimes uh, clients don't know what they really want in terms of the interface. And if you are just going to sit there and type all the CSS, uh, it's going to take you a long time. And then you find the client is going to say, oh, I don't like this, I don't like that. And you go back and forth. You're supposed to be a PHP developer and not a UI developer. So this really comes in handy. So you don't have to spend hours designing buttons and the like. So we'll get Bootstrap so that we can easily um, create our UI. 
So you can use the CDN here, that's getting this link and that link and putting them in your project. But this is only good if you have fast internet and you always be online while working. But if you want to work offline as well, just uh, download the compiled CSS, not the source files, but the compiled version. Download this and uh, we'll be good to go. All right, so if you have installed ZAMP and you have Bootstrap, we are ready to go. So what you do now, once you install ZAMP, there's a folder that is created on your C drive. So that's C ZAMP HD Docs. Or if you have a different system here, just look for HD Docs where you installed the ZAMP folder. So HD Docs here, and this is where all our uh, projects reside. And inside HD Docs, I have created a folder called POS, P-O-S, short for point of sale. And I only have one image in here, which is the same one. All right, so now that we have that out of the way, we're going to create a an MVC system here that will help us. Yeah, it's good to have to organize your app in a specific way. So uh, we're going to create a few folders here and start doing our thing. Also for text uh, editing the text, I'm going to be using Sublime Text as usual. So uh, if you don't have Sublime Text, you can download it or you can use Notepad. You can really use any text editor of your choice, but I prefer Sublime Text. So you can click Sublime Text download and uh, download that. You can use VS Code as well, that's fine. Uh, it's just a little too much for me. So I prefer something very simple like Sublime Text. So get that and uh, let's begin coding, yeah? So if you go online and uh, Google Images and just type soft drinks single product, you can download images of soft drinks just for us to use as uh, samples, okay? Like this one right here, and then uh, just save these images uh, to your folder. So I'm saving them to point of sale POS right now. So I've saved quite a number of them in here for soft drinks. So just go crazy and get as many images as you want. Also, you can search for... Um... So the important thing is to keep in mind that we want square images. Same width, same height. Uh, but uh, for now, we can avoid WebP files because I'm not sure if PHP at the moment supports this. I'm going to do some, I'm going to need to do some research and figure out how we can crop these images or convert them to JPEG, then crop them later. So for now, just get uh, either PNG or JPEG files, just to keep things a little bit simpler. Try to get square images, but even though you can't, it's okay. We're going to, much later, we're going to learn how to crop these images using PHP, so that's okay but get as many square images as you can. So I think that does it. <coughs> Excuse me there. Let me get one of these. Ah, let me get this one. I think this one is fine. But keep in mind the square thing here. Also look for fast food products. So let's just type fast food or something like that or restaurant menu or something then you're going to get some of these so look for square images here as well as much as possible but you don't really need square images per se but in the beginning we do need them then later on we're going to add a cropper so you may need those that are not so square as well as long as they look good uh, that should suffice Okay, so I can't seem to find any square images. However, I have downloaded a few, so this should be okay, I guess. Uh, Starbucks, this one looks uh, 640, 640, that's good enough for me. So let me save, hopefully it's not WebP and uh, unfortunately it is. So yeah, um, it's a battle to find square images, but just download the images that you want and we are good to go. So now let's organize our files a lot better. 
So this is the folder now, how it looks like with all the new images that I've added. So of course we need to be more, um, <clears throat> we need to work things out a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is type um, uh, up here. So create an app folder like that. So I'm going to create another folder here called public. So the, <clears throat> excuse me, the app folder here is going to um, contain all the sensitive files, of course, and the public folder will contain all the non-sensitive files. So let me create another one called images like this. So I'm going to move all the images into that, except the, the one that I'm using for reference. So I will drag everything into the images folder and bang. But images folder should be in the public folder. So let's drag and drop it in there. But even in here, the images folder should just not be there. Let's create another folder called assets so that we can add more things in there. But right here, let's create a CSS folder and a JavaScript folder. So JS and CSS uh, images. And uh, yes, this should do just fine. So let's move all three of these into assets like that. Great. So in the public assets, and then there are three folders here with images over here. Very cool. And then let's go in the app folder here. In here, we're going to, um, we want to use MVC, but it just is a loose version of MVC, not so strict with OOP, but uh, just something to help us navigate so I'll use controllers here, create a folder called controllers and uh, models. And the other one will be views. And then the other one will be core like this. Okay, so all the folders we need right now. So all the views, the things that uh, the user is going to see will be in here. All the controllers where all the code is going to reside is going to be here and all the models uh, the, the connection to the database, uh, the, the files that connect to the database will be here. And then core is the files that don't change when you change a project and so on, because we are creating, literally creating a, um, what do you call this? A routing system here. So core will contain all the main core files in here. So now that we have that out of the way, I can now drag point of sale folder into my sublime text that way at least we can handle things from here we don't need to go to the folder itself all right so for now we're just going to create an index page and uh, move on from there so public folder right click and new file and let's save this file as index.php and there we go so we can add some PHP tags in there and just save it. So that's it for now. And also what we may need is a um, uh, HT access finally. Uh, actually, no, we don't need the HT access file. We won't be going that route in this one. So that is okay. Because usually what happens is we need clean URLs in our system because normally when you're building a website you want it online and you want it uh, search engine optimized which means the urls should look nice and clean for people to be able to click on them however the final product of this one is going into a shell of a windows pro, uh, project a windows app so uh, that's one thing i actually forgot here um, for those using a Mac, unfortunately, PHP desktop, I don't know if it has a Mac version or not. I, I'm not sure. So you can uh, confirm that. But the thing is, the end result is a an application. So we are not posting this online. You can use a browser if you want. That is fine because you can have a client open a browser and then they can run your program from there. That is okay. Nothing wrong with that. You can use uh, ZAMP just like we are doing here. It's just a little bit more complex uh, for the for the end user to handle. It's better to put those things in a uh, like PHP desktop, which is one app. 
Okay, so in this case, because we are pushing it into an app, we don't really need clean URLs. So we're not going to be using the HT access file. We'll just use the normal URLs that look something like this, um, uh, website.com and then question mark page is equal to something and uh, uh, value uh, is equal to key or something like this. So we don't need clean URLs for this thing at all. All right, so I'm going to see you in the next video where we begin the actual coding of our system.